Welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is a patron request from Spectrum W who wanted to see how to do a secret of mana menu system. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the project. This will be on my sample pack number four on itch. And so if we play test this, we'll see that we're a character here. I can press escape on the keyboard. I can travel through some of these items. I can press space, it goes in. I can also press space on the katana and it equips it. And then I can leave and go from there. And then if I check the variables, the katana will be equipped, and then you would do whatever you do with that logic of the current weapon. All right, so let's just see a little bit of how this is working. And the first disclaimer I want to make is that this isn't a complete menu system. The weapon side is pretty complete, so you will have a full game loop to look at. And obviously, visually, you can see that it works. But this project took me a month, maybe even a month and a half to even get this far. And it was just too much time for a tutorial. So I figured I would just get it out there. And then if any other questions come up, we can just solve them as they come. So anyway. With that disclaimer out here, let's start seeing how we do this. All right, so there'll be a lot of exploring here for you guys. I won't be able to touch every detail, but I'll try. So the first thing that we have is, I'll just kind of explain this. This menu one is the main options. This is the main ring. And then you can see this menu two is the weapons. Menu three is the items. So you're gonna need one of these for each sub menu that you go into, this one being the main one, right? You will notice that they are controller they are playable controllers. And if we go further into movement, you can see that they are tank movement, all right? And the reason why is that is how I'm doing the rotations. For instance, when we go to uh, processing here, you can see that if I press right, it is actually doing moving uh, back and forth, turning right or uh, turning left in this case. It's changing the selection that you're doing. And then after a certain amount of time, which you just kind of have to gauge this time on how big your menu is, it then goes back to processing. So the movement is handled with basically tank movement. And if we go into animations here, we can see that the uh, menu ring, let's uh, fully transparent one of these. You can see that I've just placed the player here so that I could get a gauge of where I want the menu. And then you can see that I have menu slot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have them all right here. And I have the center right here. And so that way, when it's doing the rotation, it's rotating um, based off this center. And you can see that I put it on this auto rotate and generate. So now I can cover that opacity again, right? And then I have one when it's on one when it's opening, which this one kind of, it kind of uh, throws it out there. That's why it has that little like um, minimized to spin effect going on there because there's also some scaling. So you can see I scale it at 30%, then I linear interpolate it to 100%. And so that's why the images start out small and then, and then get big. Then I have a start. I can't remember why this was required, but maybe it was because I needed a, oh, as you can see, the start one doesn't have any of the uh, connection points. So I think I needed that for, for some reason. Then the close is, as you can imagine, it's closing out, all right? On is just when it's on, okay? So none of the movement is happening from the animations, but it's happening except for like the opening and closing. But the movement is happening because of the animations, because of where I have the center, because of where I have my connection points, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you press right, it turns left. And then if you press left, then the menu turns right. And you can change the turning speed right here. You can also set the base turning speed right here. Okay. So that is pretty much the movement. These things are just particulars. They just kind of happen to do, but um, I just wanted to show you this. And then also this exit menu, because this is the main menu, this is just how you exit basically when you press the escape key, which is B or however this is, then it will escape and it will um, tell every everything to destroy itself basically. So the cursor, then it will um, tell the ring menu spawner 
to not be on anymore so that you can call it again. And then it will just, uh, and then it will enable the layer that the other things are on in the game. And so you can see that if we go to now the, the ring menu spawner. Now, there are many places where you could put this, but in order to do a ring menu system, you're going to need to have it on the actual scene. You can't have it on the menu scene. And so to do this, what I did was in the regular scene here, layer one, is going to be where the ring menu will go. So you can see that the ring spawner is on layer one, all right? Every other layer is going to be the rest of your game. Layer one will only be your ring spawner. And the reason why is because, and another thing that I do is I move it to layer one. So that way you could generate it off your player. And that, that's what I was saying. There's many ways that you could do this. You could generate it off your player every scene and then it automatically goes to layer one kind of a thing. That way it's just an automatic process. You don't have to place it in each scene. That's how I would do it personally. But for the sake of this demo, um, it moves to layer one right away. And then if you press the escape key, then it's going to do a couple things. First thing it's gonna do is it's going to disable every layer. So this, what th this is kind of like pausing. It's basically pausing, but it's better than pausing because like changing your game speed to zero, it's better because it also prevents uh, motion tracking things like bullets or stuff like this. Game speed zero will not affect those, some of them anyway. And so this is a much safer way to pause your game. And what makes it nice is there's an option right here to disable unselected layers. And so now we can just say, layer one, but then we're going to disable the unselected layers. And that's how we can pause everything but the menu, that menu layer. All right. Then we move this to the player. So that way it's centered again on the player. I have a little offset here, you know, just whatever specific, and then you generate the menus. So this is where you would generate the menus. The main menu would be default actions. And then, yep, these are default actions as well. And then you would also generate a cursor and you would set wherever the specifics need to be however you set that up, all right? So this is how it spawns. So then in the main menu, when you escape, what you're doing is you're placing the ring spawner back into that, this action right here to wait for input again. And then you're enabling every unselected layer. And that's how you unpause the game, all right? So that's kind of the loop as far as how that's working. All right, so let's go to the cursor now because this is, uh, pretty standard way that I do cursors now. I basically have cursors be the shower of everything, the effects or the, um, the name. So for instance, you can see that when the cursor is on, all right, then here's processing the main menu. Here's processing the weapons menu. And you can see that I did not get to the items menu, but I felt like I provided enough to, to show how this works. So let's just go to the main menu, for instance. So item one was the, the weapons. Okay. You can see that I show weapons. Now I only show this if the option selection is, is indeed one. And remember that is determined right here. These are what is determining what the option selection is. So when you open it, then the current menu is one. And then we, we uh, do that. And then if we go press right, then it changes the option selection. And that's how that works. So now we go to back to the cursor here. So if it is item one, so the weapon here, and you press A, and we also wanna make sure that the weapon is in proce process. And what that means is, remember this little weight here. So if, the, if you press right and it moves left, we wanna make sure that that movement is done before we actually go into the menu. So we wanna make sure that it's in process. So that's why I add that little um, check right here. Again, when you're using input and a condition, always make sure you use change if all conditions are met. And then what it does is it goes to menu two. And so what that does is it executes menu one to close. So the main menu, it moves to close here. And what it does is just, it instantly goes to off and it's just kind of waiting. 
The other thing that it does is it waits a couple, it waits 0.2 seconds, and then it turns menu two to open. And so menu two, when it starts, it goes to off because it knows that it's not the menu on. So then it all of a sudden gets thrown to open and then it opens and does its menu thing, all right? So this is kind of how that cursor is working. Then you can go to, and then also it, um, the menu is what throws the cursor back into on. I'm trying to find where that exactly happens. Maybe that's in menu. Okay. So it must be in here. It goes open on. Yep. Right here. So right here, it executes the cursor into on. So the cursor goes to on. So we hit go menu two. The weapons goes to open and then it throws the cursor into on in which case it then selects what menu it is in and goes to process for that menu. So that's kind of the loop there. So now let's kind of follow this process. You can see that we have a, a switch here, weapon selection one. So if weapon selection one is, then you uh, go down to here and you show the text uh, name. Then if you have it, you can then equip it and it shows, let's see here, we reset some of the switches here and then we turn on the switches that are required. And you can see that in the weapons here, we have effects. And all of these weapons are determined by a common switch. They also have a connection point associated with them. And so that is what is determining what effects are showing, okay? So go back to cursor, and that's basically it. When you do equip it, and it resets all these switches and turns on the new effects that need to show, which is in this case, the um, equipped version of it, then it just goes back into process and you can go from there. The only other thing that we have on this one is we have a, when you press the escape, what it does is it goes back to menu one and it just makes sure that you uh, close menu two. So you're throwing uh, menu two into close. You're then waiting the 0.2 seconds and then you're turning the menu one on. And then this one would turn the, I have it menu one. This one would, yeah, it is menu one actually because this is the items. Basically the main menu would always be the main menu basically. And then you just have a couple sub menus or however many you needed. And so, yeah, this would kind of be the process. You could see that you could have one for, you know, you're going to want your options. And so maybe on the main one, you have one for volume options. So this would be, you know, volume. And then you would do the uh, general way of turning on and off your volume, however you would want to do. So you would just add it like that. And then you would just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're changing the current menu and you just keep increasing it. So this one would be four. The next one would be uh, five. You'd want to make sure that you have a new menu type for this. For example, you could even, change it a bit too. If you click on options, you could have a, a different type of menu show up if you wanted. So there, there was a, a little bit of flexibility. I think I gave enough of the, of just what it takes to do this. And I, I don't think I was clear enough on this. So you could see that I have weapon one and then I have weapon one equipped it. And so there, there is a difference here when it shows the, um, that little E or not. So take a look through here as well to, to see that. So you would just add more weapons on here, more weapons uh, equipped it on here. If you go to animation here, you can see that I have equipped it, just this little E right here. But in the main, let's see here, where was it? Oh, you can see I was just using these effects. Yeah, so this is all you do is just, you know, make an effect for it. You can see I just have it centered and all that good stuff. So yeah, hopefully this made sense. If you have any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, we'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.